Hey y'all. So I want to show you what I feed my uh, Connie Corso and my Pitbull Bully, American Bully puppy here. And my Pit Lab mix this way. I feed my pack. Um, it begins in the morning when I'm getting ready to go to work. Uh, this is raw, a raw steak. It's a very cheap cut of steak it's called a beef shank. They used to be about $3. They've gone up in price, but anyway, it's frozen and it has the marrow bone in it. And so, uh, what I do is I get it frozen so that freezing it takes care of the, um, parasites. It kills most of the parasites, not all of them, but freeze it for, for 48 hours at least. And then, uh, and then because it's frozen and because it has a marrow bone in it, it keeps them occupied um, for a good 30 minutes maybe. And that lets me get out the door and they don't even notice that I'm gone when I go to work there. Ozzy, come see. Now I give hers last. Come, come, come. Come on, Oz. Come, come. Ozzy's the alpha, so he gets his first. And he's already sitting, so that's good. Ooh, Papa. Give me this chip. Okay, got it. Okay. Come on, Ed. Well, what I'll do, sometimes he just doesn't like to take it from my hand. He's very polite. Come on, Ed. So what I'm going to do is just leave it there for him. Uh-uh, not for you. Not for you. There you go, Ed. There you go, Ed. Oh, also, uh, get, not for you. That's for Ozzy. Also, I lay these sheets down on their their dog beds see underneath is their dog bed it's an orthopedic bed get it eyes and so i laid it that down so that when i come home from work i just throw those in the wash because it's got you know the raw meat on it and so i keep everything pretty clean that way so now ozzy's claimed that he won't let her get near it and i don't think she'll i don't think she'll dare get near it see she knows when there's raw meat at stake. She knows um, not to mess with the alpha. Okay, now Tequila will get hers. Tequila! I usually try to give her a smaller one, but she is patiently waiting. Um, but it just so happened that they didn't have any small ones when, uh, when I got these, so. So yeah, uh, this is great. This is actually, actually, this is the first day that I'm leaving Tequila home alone with the big dogs. Um, just cause I, my, my sitter that I take Tequila to the puppy, she had a, she couldn't, she couldn't take her today and I have to work. So I'm gonna test it. I got cameras on her. Good sit, good sit. Sit, take a sit. Good girl. Okay, good girl. See, and now I made her wait. So that's um, that is a very, very important gesture when you're training your puppy. When you're, it, 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 it they get loads of information from that gesture right there. Um, that's an alpha move. So I told her when she's allowed to eat that extremely high value uh, treat. Um, so that right there lets her know that I'm the alpha. And it also is a good command to have. So she looks to you uh, for permission. Um, it doesn't get any uh, better than that, you know, as far as um, a high value treat. So uh, that's a great, great little exercise there. So now she'll, she'll be busy there for a good 20 minutes. And I'll be able to get out the door and the last one to eat is, is Tux. He's very patient. And I just rinse, rinse them off so they don't get frostbite or frost burn or anything like that. Um, look how big that marrow bone is. It's mostly bone. As you can see, it's mostly bone. Okay, Tuxie. And then Tux will take his to a, <laughs> a more secure location. He doesn't like to eat near Ozzy or the other, or the other dogs. Um, because he... Uh, 
He doesn't want any confrontation. He'll usually take his outside to go eat. So there you have it. And then I'm gonna wash my hands and uh, come back in a minute here. Okay, so they're all set and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, um, I'm ready to go to work. You can see the alpha is uh, eating his right next to this pit bull bully mix. Uh, with no with no confrontation or anything like that so it's good it's also good practice there's there'll be no fighting um, uh, so it's a big, that's why pack hierarchy pack hierarchy is so important to have that established early on with your pack so that so that the uh, the other pack members know not to mess with the other dog but yeah so I'm ready to get out of here now I just go to work so yeah, so that was uh, pretty good. That's their doggy door right there. So they're not they're not coming out to find me. Usually, if they don't have something like that to distract them, they will run out the doggy door if I'm leaving somewhere, and then they'll you know whine at the gate and where are you going without me? You know, if you have dogs, you probably know. It's a huge ordeal when you're leaving your pack. Because dogs are pack oriented, you know, they don't, when they see their pack leader leaving, they get anxious, they get nervous. But yeah, so then I'll, I'll come back on here and I'll show y'all uh, the routine when I come home. Like when I feed them dinner, what I feed them, how I feed them and everything. So we'll see y'all in a minute. Well, in a little bit. <laughs> hey y'all. I'm just getting home. Uh... So yeah, like I said, this was the first day I left tequila at home, alone, with the big dogs, and uh, she did great. She did wonderful. Oh, no jumping. Tequila, sit. Tequila, sit. Good girl, baby. Good girl. Yes, you're good girl. Mm. Ah, see. Yeah, she did great. So I think she's ready to stay home alone. So that's how the transition was. So um, just for reference, uh, you know, about what time, you know, what, how old I, each of my puppies was when I left them at home, when I began to leave them at home alone. Tequila's uh, almost four months old almost not quite but i think she's about a week shy of being four months so she's 15 weeks uh so there's tex there's texy so i was able to leave Lu uh, lucia my kind of corso puppy home alone a couple weeks earlier than that or sooner than that when she, when she was even younger. So it just depends on the puppy. But, uh, but yeah, we're just uh, doing our routine when I come home. And I wanted to show y'all, uh, finish showing y'all what I feed them, what I feed the dogs in a day. Yes, this my tequila. Come on, Tex. Oh, I'm a good girl. You're such a good girl today. Mm -mm. This is my tequila. This is my good girl. You do a good. You do a good girl. See, I stayed home all alone. Mm hmm. Ah, see. <laughs> there she goes, nibbling my ears. Ah, see. This is my tequila. I'm a good girl. You're such a good girl. You see how she pulls on his, um, you see how she's pulling right there on his neck, on his uh, cheeks? She really, she actually draws blood and Dolce does the same thing. Oh, he had enough of it. Well, 
that right there is what they do um that right there is what they do when the ears are long they do the same thing to the ears they go first for the ears the ears that are hanging hanging down if they're not cropped uh they just grab on the ear and just yank yank down on it and that is the reason why i crop the ears um I know, I know people come and say how cruel it is and traumatic and everything. Mm, it's almost, in, um, in my mind, it's almost more cruel uh, to leave the ear uh, hanging out like that to where it's, it's vulnerable to get pulled on and chewed on every day by each other. And, you know, I, I can't be home to stop that every second of the day because I work. Um, you know, so if you're if you're like, well, no, you can stop that. No, I can't. I, I wish I could be with them every second of every day, but I can't. But yeah, that's why I I have I cont I continue to to crop the ears of my dogs because they absolutely go right for the floppy ear and they yank as hard as they can. All right, so I'm gonna uh, hang out here for a little bit with the dogs and then I'm gonna head inside and show y'all what we, um, what they eat, how I feed them. Okay, yeah, so let me show y'all uh, kind of the routine when I get home and what I feed them. Oh, and this is my baby boy. Oh, I'm used to my baby. Hmm. Okay. Oh, but first I gotta show you this one real quick. <laughs> this is gross. Uh, but I want to show you how real the struggle is when you're on a kind of corso. So this, I have uh, 10 foot ceilings, right? So this is my kitchen cabinet. It's pretty high. Take a guess. Take a gander. What that might be. Yeah. Yeah, so that is um, when Ozzy this morning shook his head and he happened to have slobber on him. Uh, the slobber went flying there. I've seen slobber uh, pretty high up. Uh... I've seen slobber all the way up there, so <laughs> yeah, just to get an idea of uh, if, if you are a really, really clean freak and you don't like to clean more than you have to, it's a consideration before you get this breed of dog that slobbers. Um, he doesn't slobber all the time. He's not slobbering now, but yeah, when they're, after they drink or if they're hungry and they're salivating or they see something good they want to eat. And then, of course, after they exercise, but um, when they're just resting like that, they, they're not slobbering. But anyway, I'm going to clean that up. I, just, I left it so I could show you how it really is. So this is what I feed them most nights. Sometimes I'll scramble up some eggs, but this is a bag of frozen chicken tenders. And I'll just boil one bag of this. This is a two-pound bag. I'll just boil that and shred it up and add it to their kibble and so um and that's pretty much what i do and that that will be all that they eat in a day Tequila. <laughs> it never fails as soon as i get this bag of chicken out she's front and center tequila front and center reporting for duty tequila Tequila recording for duty. And uh, and just she sits right away because she knows that sitting usually gets her something good. Boil it. I boil it for, I usually boil it for, um, it only takes probably like 15 minutes and it's boiled and then I and then I just rinse it out and uh, shred it with my hands I let 
I, I rinse it and I put, like, I let it sit in cold water for about, like, uh, 15 minutes or so. And just let that uh, boil down front and center. Front and center at your service. Tequila. Uh, so. I'll put it like on a, on a medium setting and just let that go. So yeah, this is my tequila. This is my tequila. It's almost ready. Hi, Bobacito. Hi, my Bobacito. Mm. I miss my baby boy. Mm. My Bobacito. See, what's wrong, Papa? Okay, so the chicken's uh, done boiling. So I'm just gonna turn that off and just gonna rinse it. Okay. So yeah, I'll just strain this out and run some cold water over it. Let that sit for you know good uh, probably like 15 minutes and just I'll just check if it's cool enough for me to shred. I just shred it with my hands. Um, oh, um, yeah. So I did clean this out, the slobber, so that's all nice and clean. And uh, I do keep a really clean house despite having so many dogs. Um, uh, I do really keep the floors nice and clean. What I do is I have this, that robot, kind of like a Roomba. It's a different brand, but I can run that a couple times per week. And what I found is that um, it helps. I just always have a bucket of soapy water with and a mop nearby. I just always keep like a little bit of bleach and uh, light soapy water. So that whenever I see footprints or anything like that, I'll just um, mop it up and my floors stay really clean. And then for the couch, I moved to a leather couch uh, that was, it's a lot easier to wipe clean. Definitely easier than having a fabric. I even had a, a, remo a removable, uh, nice velvet fabric couch where you could remove and wash the slip covers, but Man, that was just a lot of work because I was having to remove them, wash them like once a week. But here I can just easily wipe up anything. And then I have these covers. Um, these are actually just dog, dog bed covers. And that helps a lot to keep it clean. And then of course the dog beds, all of those covers are removable and washable. And like I said, I, I, what I'll do is I'll put a sheet over that whenever I give them anything that's gonna mess it up, like like that raw steak they had this morning. So those are actually in the wash right now. And, uh, and I'll rinse repeat in the morning. Let that sit for a minute. But I want to show you the kibble that I use. So once that's shredded, I'll mix it to their kibble. And for the big dogs that are already grown, and also tequila, I, I use, right now I'm using Taste of the Wild. This is the, um, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if you can get that. It's, good. it's the uh, Pacific Stream. The salmon, smoke flavored uh, salmon recipe. Grain free. I've been getting really good results with that. Um, what I do with, with the puppies though is I actually mix in this super super high quality kibble it's called Zeewee Peak I use the chicken they also have a beef that I've used also um but this one what I like about it it's got the New Zealand uh New Zealand green mussels in it and those mussels are are found uh you know they're they're uh they got them fresh from New Zealand they're rich with um, uh, uh, they're rich with uh, 
glycosaminoglycans, that's what I'm trying to say, that's really good for the joints. It's almost like giving them chondroitin or one of those um, supplements. Uh, but uh, it's all natural and gently, gently air dried. So supposedly the, the, that process of, um, of the food, it kind of keeps the nutrients in it. Um, more than if, if it's like exposed to extreme heat, like a lot of the, the other kibble brands like this one are exposed to extreme heat. The idea is that gently air drying will, will maintain a lot of those micronutrients and instead of like denaturing the, the protein, it keeps it more in its form, closer to raw. Not as good as raw though. So I'll, I'll mix apart some of this uh, high quality kibble with this other, high, still high quality kibble, but a little bit less of a qual lesser quality. It's still very good. I'll mix that for the puppies. And when I first get the puppies, what I do when they're very young is I, I, I feed them only this. Um, and then I, I slowly transition to mixing what I, what I use for the adults. Occasionally I'll give for that uh, Ziwi to, to Ozzy, you know, to Dolce sometimes. Oh, but the thing about the Ziwi, extremely expensive. I don't even want to tell you how much it is. It's, it's insanely expensive. I don't even know why it needs to be that much. Because people like my dumb, <laughs> like me, will pay. But uh, yeah, it's only um, it's, it's. I'm not gonna keep keep buying that once they're all adults. So, um, so yeah, so it's it's a splurge. I don't have kids, you know, so I don't have really other expenses. It's to me, it's just uh, my guilty splurge. You know, I I just I splurge on my dogs. But yeah, they'd be totally fine without that, you know, just with, um, which is with, and they'd be totally fine with just kibble too, but really ideal for them is, is to have, uh, is to have, uh, raw, but with raw, you really need to make sure that the ratios of bone to organ, uh, to me is, um, is what the body needs. And that's harder to do. The storage also is an issue if you're going to go pure raw. Okay, so I got it uh, all ready to go, front and center right here. Um, so this is Ozzy's. We'll see. I I honestly don't measure um, for Ozzy and the other dogs. The only one I really try to measure is is for Tux. He's the only one that's really overweight. And, and Dolce, she's in training right now. She's at a board and train. Uh, but I'll sometimes measure for her. I give Tux about two cups. And what I do for Tux is I just put it, uh, I've already proportioned the chicken out into um, the other bowls. And then I leave a little bit for Tux. And, um, and I just mix that with, and let him eat right out of the, the pan. And so I'm gonna call him over. Ozzy, come, come, come. Tequila. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Come on, Oz. Ozzy, who's hungry? Dang, y'all, she's limping. Who's hungry? Come on, Tequila. Come, 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 come. Of course, we're gonna make her sit. Tequila, sit. Tequila, sit. Tequila, sit. Good girl. Good girl. Wait. Very good. Wait, good girl. Good, huh? Very good. Okay, good girl. Very good. And she usually has a very good appetite. She's growing um, so quickly at an alarmingly fast rate. But now that's just how they grow. Okay, Oz. Come, come. Come on, Oz. Oz, you sit. Oz, you sit. Good boy, Papa. Okay, come on. Good boy. So there is Ozzy's. I don't usually finish that whole thing up. Okay, Tux. And Tuxy gets his. Come on, Tux. I usually feed Tux right here, somewhere around here. Okay, Tux. So.
and I don't have any issues. If y'all remember, or you can look back into the other videos of when I first got tequila here, um, <laughs> she could barely even lift her chin up on one of those raised bowls, but that's how short she was. But um, she was almost uh, to the point of being aggressive. Um, she snapped at Lucia, my other kind of corso puppy. She snapped at her when they were trying to share the same bowl. So she, she was becoming food aggressive. And so I nixed that right away, right away taught her she doesn't get to eat um, with the other dogs if she's gonna be like that. And, you know, I pushed, pushed her away gently, but let her know that she doesn't get to share that bowl if she's gonna be like that. Eventually, she, she, learned, she actually learned very quickly. And then um, now she's to the point where she can share the same bowl even with the other puppy, the kind of course of puppy Lucia. They often will just share the same bowl. Um, but I do kind of feed them separately like this, just to give them some space. Um, when I have my other kind of course of Dolce, my female, adult female, she'll usually eat right there in one of the raised bowls next to Ozzy. Good boy, Papa. But as you can see how, see how his jaw, jowls, cheeks and everything, they're, they're so floppy and um, that whole bowl right there around the edges and everything, uh, it's slimy because that's all his saliva helping him to digest, but, and it's a lot of it. And then you can see at the base of the bowl, how much kind of gets out. So it's a lot of cleanup. Um, I mean, a lot more than another dog, I guess. For me, I'm so used to it, it doesn't bother me. I just take a washcloth and I wipe down the bowl when he's done, the um, that raised bowl part. And then I'll just, you know, wipe up any mess that he's left, the slimy slobber on the floor. And it's kind of, you know, more or less contained in the area that he is. And um, if it's real bad, then, you know, I'll just take the mop. It's our, the mop bucket's already ready with soapy water. And so that's my cleanup routine. Look at him, see? Chicken, chicken going everywhere. Tequila. Okay, she must have just slept funny on her foot. Sometimes she'll sleep funny on it. She, she just had woken up from a nap, so she doesn't seem to be really limping too much right now. So there you go. Yeah, see, she's she's not she's not limping too much right there. I'll keep monitoring her. So, anyways, there you have it, y'all. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed it and. Um, Leave me a line uh, with a comment if you have any questions about anything. And let me know what you guys feed your Corsos, if, if you have Corsos. I'm interested to hear what y'all feed, or what y'all uh, with Corsos are feeding yours. Or if you have uh, bully dogs, what do you feed your dogs? I think I've heard that um, pit bulls and bully dogs are more prone to gaining weight. I've noticed that in my pit bull mix, Tux. He's... Um, He's the one that's been gaining the most weight since I had him. He's not bad. I mean, he's not terrible, but he could stand to lose a couple pounds. Uh, but you see, he didn't even really finish the kibble. Sometimes they do finish everything. Sometimes they don't. But, And that's why I don't really proportion um, with a lot of them. Because they'll just, they, don't, they eat till they're, they're full. And um, right now they're pretty much just picking out, out the chicken. And um, see, he walked away. See what I mean? He didn't even finish all the kibble. It's a slimy mess. But, but they'll, you know, come and nibble on that throughout the night. He didn't want to let any of that chicken go to waste. <laughs> so, well, I'll talk to y'all on the next one. And I uh, hope y'all having a good night. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, y'all.